Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the common tangent and its equation for two circles that touch each other internally. Let's suppose we have two circles like this whose equations have been provided. Now for this type of relative position, how many common tangents can we have? Well, in fact, we are going to have only one common tangent and that's going to look like this. I have a yellow dotted line here, that's the common tangent for both the circles and in this case it is in fact a direct common tangent. It's not a transverse common tangent. It's a direct common tangent because both the circles are on the same side of the tangent. Next we are going to see what would be the equation of this tangent and also we are going to see how to find the coordinates of the point of contact. For that I have to do just a little bit of construction here. I am going to join the two centers and extend it all the way to the boundary of the circle and then I am going to name the important points here. Let's suppose the center of the bigger circle is P and the center of the smaller circle is Q and D is the point of contact of both the circles as well as the common tangent. From the given equation the coordinates of P would be negative G sub 1 comma negative F sub 1 and the coordinates of the center of the second circle the smaller circle which is Q its coordinates would be negative G sub 2 comma negative F sub 2 and let's assume that the coordinates of the point of contact which is point D let's assume its coordinates are X sub 1 comma Y sub 1. Next we are going to see how to find the coordinates of D. Before that let's quickly note down the radius of each of the circles. I have noted it up there on the top right corner. Let's assume R sub 1 is the radius of the larger circle, the white circle and R sub 2 is the radius of the smaller circle, the blue circle. Also on the top left corner I have made one small note there that PD will be the radius of the larger circle which is R sub 1, QD will be the radius of the smaller circle which is R sub 2 and PQ will be R sub 1 minus R sub 2. I am not using the absolute value sign here because here we know that R sub 1 is greater than R sub 2 from the diagram. So R sub 1 minus R sub 2 will be a positive quantity so PQ will be equal to R sub 1 minus R sub 2 and also PD will be perpendicular to the direct common tangent here. That we know from the theorem of circles that the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. So in this case PD will be perpendicular to the common tangent. So then we can say that the slope of PD times the slope of the common tangent will be equal to negative 1 because they are perpendicular to each other so the product of their slopes will be equal to negative 1. Now what is the slope of PD? Well slope of PD will be equal to the slope of PQ as well as slope of QD and that will be something like this. It will be negative F sub 2 minus negative F sub 1 over negative G sub 2 minus negative G sub 1 and that will look like F sub 1 minus F sub 2 over G sub 1 minus G sub 2. So then what will be the slope of the common tangent? Well that will be negative 1 over this slope and ultimately it's going to look like this. It will be G sub 2 minus G sub 1 over F sub 1 minus F sub 2. If you carefully look at the diagram you will realize that D divides PQ in the ratio of R sub 1 is to R sub 2 externally of course. It divides the PQ line segment externally in the ratio of R sub 1 is to R sub 2 and using the section formula for external division we can easily find the coordinates of D. The X coordinate will be like this. I am simply using the section formula for external division and similarly the Y coordinate of D would be like this. So now we know the coordinates of a point on this common tangent and that point is D and also we know the slope of the common tangent right. We have already derived the slope and we know the coordinates of a point. So using the point slope form of the equation of a straight line we can easily write down the equation of this common tangent and that will look like this y minus y sub 1 will be equal to the slope which is g sub 2 minus g sub 1 over f sub 1 minus f sub 2 times x minus x sub 1. Also in a previous video we have seen that the equation of the common tangent is actually like this s sub 1 minus s sub 2. Now what is s sub 1? Well s sub 1 is the left hand side expression of the equation of the first circle and s sub 2 is the left hand side expression of the equation of the second circle. In a previous video I have done a complete derivation of this formula s sub 1 minus s sub 2 equals 0 for the common tangent. I have provided the link in the description. Feel free to watch that video. There you will see the complete derivation of this equation. So we have two different ways of doing it. We can use the first equation or the second equation. In both the cases the result will be same anyways. Next we are going to take an example. Let's suppose we have an example like this that says find the equation of the common tangent of these two circles. So here we have been provided with the equations of two circles and we are going to study the relative position of these two circles a little bit and then we will determine how many common tangents we are going to have. 
First, let's compare the equation of the first circle with the general form of the equation of a circle. And from there, we can say that 2g sub 1x is equal to negative 12x. And from there, we can say g sub 1 will be equal to negative 6 and negative g sub 1 will be equal to positive 6. Similarly, we can say 2f sub 1y is equal to negative 16y. And from here, we can say f sub 1 is equal to negative 8 and negative f sub 1 will be equal to positive 8. And then let's find out the radius of the first circle. The formula for the radius is like this square root of g sub 1 squared plus f sub 1 squared minus c sub 1. Now let's plug in the values here and the radius turns out to be 5 unit. Next let's tackle the equation of the second circle. Now if you look at that equation there is something interesting. The coefficient of the x squared term and the y squared term that coefficient is not 1. Even though the coefficients are equal they are equal to 5 but it's not 1. So first thing we should do is we should convert the coefficient of the x squared term and the y squared term into 1. And for that what do we have to do? Well we have to divide both sides of that equation by a positive 5 and if we do that that equation going to look like this and now we are going to compare that with the general form of the equation of a circle. Next let's try to find out the values of g sub 2 and f sub 2. So from here we can say 2 times g sub 2 times x is equal to negative 42 over 5 times x and from here g sub 2 will be equal to negative 21 over 5 and negative g sub 2 will be equal to positive 21 over 5. Similarly, 2 times f sub 2 times y is equal to negative 56 over 5 times y and from there we can say f sub 2 is equal to negative 28 over 5 and negative f sub 2 is equal to positive 28 over 5. Next, let's calculate the radius of the second circle. We know the formula for the radius. Let's plug in the values. And once we plug in the values, the radius turns out to be 2 unit. So the radius of the smaller circle is 2 unit. Now let's study the relative position of these two circles. We really don't know how they are oriented. They might be touching externally, they might be touching internally, they might be intersecting, they might be disjoint, we just don't know. So let's do a little bit of study. Let's try to find out the distance between the centers. Using the distance formula, we can say that PQ distance will be like this and that turns out to be positive 3 which can be written as 5 minus 2. Now why am I writing it like this? Well, because I know 5 is the radius of the first circle and 2 is the radius of the second circle. So this appears to be the difference of the two radii there, r sub 1 minus r sub 2. So we see that the distance between the centers of two circles is equal to the difference of their radii. That means these two circles must be touching each other internally. In a previous video where we did the study of the relative positions of two circles, there we have seen that when the distance between the centers is equal to the difference of their radii, then the circle should be touching each other internally. So in this case, these two circles in the example, they touch each other internally. Now that we know the circles touch each other internally, they will have only one common tangent. Now let's try to find out the equation of that common tangent. And to find the equation, we are going to use s sub 1 minus s sub 2 equals 0. That's the easiest one. So we can write it like this. This is s sub 1 minus s sub 2 equals 0, of course. And on the left hand side, if we remove the parenthesis, it's going to look like this. And then you can see the x squared terms will cancel out each other. Similarly, the y squared terms will also cancel out each other. And then finally, we are going to be left with this on the left hand side. And we are going to simplify this a little bit. And our equation going to look kind of like this. Now we are going to multiply both sides by a positive 5. And then if we divide both sides by a negative 6, then our equation is going to look like this. 3x plus 4y minus 25 equals 0. And that is the equation of the common tangent for these two circles in the example. And that is our answer. I hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.